Thank you. Uh, thank you, James, and thank you for having me. Um, so by show of hands, who has heard of a company called Lumosity? Has anyone here heard of Lumosity? Raise your hands. Okay, so just to orient you before I start talking about my stuff, um, we are basically Lumosity, but for career assessment and recruiting. So imagine brain games, um, but instead of training your brain to do something different, we are using them to assess your brain and your cognitive and emotional traits, and then use them to match you with your ideal career, um, and also help companies recruit in a different way. Um, this is targeted to, you know, generally speaking, to the millennial crowd and under, um, mostly because those are the people that are still kind of figuring out um, what they should do with their lives, although at 43, I always feel like I'm still figuring that out too, so. Um, so my co-founder and I met at MIT in brain and cognitive sciences. Um, we spent about a decade at Harvard and MIT doing brain imaging, so using fMRI, MRI, EEG, DTI, every form of imaging you can imagine to try to understand people's cognitive and emotional functioning. <clears throat> and in the process of doing that, uh, cognitive neuroscientists across the globe have developed these cool computer games that assess cognitive and emotional traits. And Lumosity offers them primarily for cognitive training, but there are a whole host of these games that can actually be used to look at emotional traits as well. Um, so as that was sort of our background, and then we became interested in how this could be applied uh, it to sort of more real world problems that didn't involve you know, pathology and <clears throat> understanding disease states in psychiatric populations, but more understanding how, these, how this technology could be applied to uh, sort of you know, the everyday person and, and some of the problems they were encountering. And the inspiration for Pymetrics came uh, sort of through the realization that uh, career instruments really are kind of still stuck in the uh, 1970s. Uh, mostly, if you go to try to figure out what you should do with your life, you're handed a piece of paper, uh, which is a questionnaire, and the questionnaire is probably dated back to sort of 1950s psychology. That Myers-Briggs, one of the most popular instruments, was s formed in the 1940s. So we really felt like there was a pretty big space for innovation here, um, and that no one had really thought about using a behavioral science, cognitive behavioral science, um, and machine learning to try to both predict people's careers better and then also help them connect with companies. Um, so really the vision that we have is to use these two types of technologies, both of which really only became available in, not available, but like machine learning, cognitive science, all kind of came of age starting in the 1970s, 1980s, um, and really haven't kind of progressed into the world of recruiting. And so what we're trying to do with Pymetrics um, uh, is to build a couple things. We're trying to build a new classification system of careers based on people's cognitive and emotional traits rather than some of the other systems that are out there. Um, use recommendation engine technology to really um, help everyone on the spectrum of where they fall in the distribution of these traits find their optimal career rather than people thinking, oh, I need to go after somebody that you know went to an Ivy League school, has 800 on their SATs, and uh, I don't know, was captain of the lacrosse team, um, which is sort of the way it works now. And we believe that by doing this, we're going to bring a lot more liquidity and efficiency to the uh, world of, you know, of hiring, basically, which currently is a pretty inefficient um, process. So the way that we do this is we have taken what are basically open source cognitive science games and made them sort of, oh, sorry, they're exercises. We've tried to make them a little bit more fun. We call them games now. That's part of the... Uh, PR effort, and um, through this we c collect 90 different cognitive and emotional traits, and then when, once we've done that, we use data science to predict um, what careers people are best suited for rather than using questionnaire-based data or, uh, or resume data. And again, this technology is pretty standard in healthcare and research, and we're just porting it over to the world of, of, uh, of HR. Um, these are some of the traits that we measure. Again, I don't, is there anyone here who's ever touched the field of cognitive neuroscience? Raise your hand, yes, okay, so you would recognize, I'm gonna bring up a couple of the games in a minute, you'll recognize them. These are some pretty standard um, cognitive and emotional traits that we would measure previously in the scanner, look at neural patterns associated with them, um, but we were always collecting behavioral measures as we measured those neural patterns, so we know that the behavioral markers with, associated with these games are also fairly robust and stable, which obviously is what you need when you're doing any kind of, um, you know, sort of scientific assessment development. Um, and the other improvement is really that we get a very large data matrix on someone um, because of you know, the fact that we collect data every second um, and we use that data 
um, as opposed to some of the older forms of technology in the space that are they're fairly limited in their in their sampling space. Um, and the thing that we use it for, really, we're trying to use it for a couple of different things. Uh, you know, first is really um, making the uh, pool of people that companies consider as applicants as broad as possible, so, so our sourcing tool. Um, and then, you know, more in the standard sort of assessment and placement tool that companies can use in terms of figuring out where people are best suited within their organization. So those are some of the things that we use this technology for. But ultimately, the best analogy is sort of like a Lumosity meets LinkedIn, where you're really trying to use this cognitive uh, science to help, m help the matching between people and jobs in uh, sort of realize the potential that we think it has in the, in the 21st century. Um, so I'm going to just break out of here really quickly. I just want to show you a few of the games in case those of you who have not ever been in an MRI experiment, you might want to know kind of like what are these games, what do they look like. Um, so I'm going to show you a very, very straightforward and often used game. Um, and I'm going to ask you guys to participate. So this involves clapping. So normally if you were doing it on the computer, you would just press the space bar. But because we're going to do it as a group, um, we're going to clap. So, sorry. So when you see a red circle, I just want, and again, you want to try to do this as quickly and accurately as possible. When you see a red circle, I want you to clap. And when you see a green circle, I want you to do nothing. Okay? You guys ready? I'm going to do it too. And it goes on like this for 90 seconds. It's a fairly tedious task. Um, and you guys are good. I didn't hear any clappers on green, which um, you know, so oftentimes happens. So anyone want to take a guess as to what that, what that measured? Focus. Yeah, it's a test of attention. So basically, it measures two different things. It measure, measures what we call um, attention control, which basically just means like how attentive you are. And we found that certain people that are you know, sort of very high on attention control um, tend to be uh, well suited for certain careers and not others. And the other trait that it measures is, oops, sorry, broke out of that too quickly. It measures, um, oh, sorry, attention duration is what I meant to say. So attention duration is just sort of how attentive you are. And so if, this is if you hit all of the red uh, circles and you don't miss any of them. And um, so these are some of the roles that we found to be correlated with high attention control. And then the other thing that it measures is um, attention, um, the impulsivity side. So if you were to hit some of the green circles, that means that you tend to be a little bit on the uh, impulsive side. And so we've also found that certain careers are, be you are better suited for certain careers versus others if you um, tend to have high versus low scores on this game. I can also show you a fairly straightforward, um, what we would call more of an emotional game. So this is a, a risk game. You may have come across this as well. It's fairly straightforward. All you are asked to do is, um, pump up certain balloons until they explode. And the idea is that with each pump, you earn a bit of money. If they explode, then you lose all of your money. So it's really kind of a risk-reward trade-off. And again, it's very straightforward. All you do is you see these balloons, and you pump the balloon, and you try to understand what the threshold is before it pops. Um, and there's three different colors. Each of these colors indicates a different sort of expected, expected value of popping, so to speak. Um, and the person kind of, you know, it's really interesting, this type of game really, people approach this type of game very differently and sort of depending on their risk profile. And then their learning curves across the different balloon types uh, tends to be quite different as well. And so it's just interesting to see. Some people will just kind of pump, 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 and see where it pops. And then they'll realize, like, kind of like some of the balloons you can actually pop quite a bit. And then other ones, they will pop uh, much more like much sooner, and that's kind of the part of the learning process. Um, so again, we have 12 of these different games that we've kind of put together that we think offer a good spectrum on people's cognitive and emotional traits. Um, and then the next thing that we've done basically is, like I said, sort of start to build a heat map of, OK, so if I am in a certain industry, what industries based on these cognitive and emotional traits are most similar to me and most dissimilar to me? And then how can I help people kind of transition? There's a lot of interest nowadays in sort of transitioning people out of certain careers that are you know, declining, so to speak, and then sort of bringing them into careers that are in 
you know, increasing in sort of the volume. Um, and we're talking basically just, you know, industries in general. And so this type of analysis can really be helpful in trying to understand, okay, if I'm currently in a shrinking industry, let's say, and this industry is, you know, nearest neighbors are these three other industries, where can I go from there? And as you can imagine, this technology is more capable of doing this than a sort of skill-based technology where the skills might actually be quite different, for example. Like we found, for example, software engineering and accounting tend to share a lot of the same traits. Now, you know, maybe that doesn't come as a big surprise, but you know, they're, you're not exactly taking the same classes, you're not exactly learning the same skills, so to speak, if you're coding versus you know, taking actuarial classes. Um, but that having been said, the profiles underlying those two uh, careers are quite similar. Um, and so using a heat map like this, you can really kind of get to some of that. Um, and again, I mean, you know, we, you know, the different, in, it's sort of interesting just even in the finance space, like we've done a lot of work with, you know, different financial firms. And if you look at this profile, it's, you know, the profile of a hedge fund, uh, you know, manager. Um, that tends to be quite similar to some of the, con some of the uh, finance profiles we have, but actually quite different to venture capital, which some people might assume, oh, they're, you know, must be very similar. And then, you know, you kind of dig into the details of why that is and you find out basically that it's sort of a different reward profile and a different emotional, uh, emotional identification uh, profile that they have. So, again, we're trying to put forth that this is a novel way of looking at people's suitability, suitability for different careers and that it can re be really helpful in understanding sort of, um, you know, bigger trends in the economy and how we can potentially use, leverage this type of technology to really help us, uh, you know, not just with individual problems, but also with broader societal problems that we see of shifting labor markets and, and how people can shift through those markets in a, in a more efficient, efficient way. So that's about it. Thank you.